Hey guys, Dan here from CLE Tech, and today we're going to do a complete walkthrough of the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus software. So when you first get your new S8 or S8 Plus, you might be a little overwhelmed, especially if you're new to Android and or Samsung devices. This video is going to serve as a walkthrough of the software and all of the various major features and some features you might not be aware of. Now this walkthrough is meant to be as comprehensive as possible, but if you think that I missed something, please leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what that is. Starting off with the home screen, if you long press on the home screen, you can access your wallpapers or themes, widgets, and home screen settings. Now, although you can access themes and wallpapers from the main settings menu, we're going to cover this now. Samsung has a store of a bunch of different themes and wallpapers that can really add a different element to your S8. There are a ton of different themes that once you apply it to your device, you can change the look of your settings menu, quick toggles, font, icons, wallpaper, etc. Personally, I prefer either the stock look or this material black theme. Widgets is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can choose a widget for your home screen by dragging and dropping. Now the home screen settings menu gives you the ability to change your layout, which will let you remove the app drawer entirely and give it more of an iPhone feel. You can change the home screen and app screen grid size and enable or disable the app drawer button. Since the default setting is to swipe up or down on the home screen to access your app drawer, you don't really need the button, but if you prefer to have it in your dock, you do have that option. Like the previous Edge models of Samsung phones, you do have your Edge panel settings. So to access your Edge panel, swipe from right to left. This will bring up your apps Edge, People Edge, etc. If you tap on the settings icon at the bottom, you can add more useful Edge panels like Smart Select, Clipboard Edge, Reminders, etc. If you wish to download more panels that aren't on your device, tap download in the upper right hand corner. Now I don't really use the edge panels a whole lot, but I do find that the smart select and the clipboard panels to be very useful. Swiping from the top down will access your notification shade and quick toggles, and one more swipe will help expand and reveal more quick toggles. Now these toggles are pretty standard across most Android phones these days, but there are a couple worth noting. Performance mode will help adjust the performance of your device depending on your needs. So the different modes include optimized, which is the default setting, game, entertainment, and high performance. Once you find the mode you think you might want, selecting one will bring up a dialog box explaining what's being changed and how it's affecting your phone's performance. For example, if you select high performance mode, you will increase brightness by 10% and the screen resolution will go from FHD plus to WQHD plus. Blue light filter will help limit some of the blue lights that's being emitted by your screen. This will make your display appear a bit warmer and will be easier on your eyes in darker situations. Now secure folder is a cool little setting that allows you to store sensitive data or media in a password secure folder. For example, if you wanted to store a photo of your driver's license or some credit card numbers, you can store it in a secure folder and then lock said folder with a pattern or the biometrics that you have set up. Finally, the last quick setting I want to touch on is the edge lighting toggle. Edge lighting illuminates the outer edge of the phone when a notification is coming through. Now this will work best when your phone is face down on a table somewhere and the lighting can reflect off of the surface, but really this isn't something that should be relied on for your notifications. Fun fact, if you see a notification come through while using your phone and you notice that it's in this pill or bubble form and centered in the screen, this is because you have edge light settings enabled while the screen is on. If you were to turn this off, notifications go back to their big rectangular size. Bixby is Samsung's new virtual assistant and it's our next stop on the software tour. To access Bixby, you can swipe from left to right while on your home screen, or you can press the dedicated Bixby button located underneath the volume down button. Now Bixby's voice assistant feature is not yet enabled, so at the time of this video, all we have to access is the card style assistant. Now as time goes on, more and more apps will have support for Bixby, but at launch, we are limited to mostly Samsung apps and some third-party apps like Twitter and Spotify. Bixby is an easy way to glance at information quickly. You can pin certain cards to the top, hide them, or have them never appear again. There is a separate Bixby settings menu, which mostly lets you toggle the apps that use Bixby, whether it be from your home or lock screen. As time goes on, I assume more settings for Bixby's voice features will appear here, so make sure to check back when that functionality goes live. So if we dive into the main settings menu, this is where we'll find all of our phone settings and different features, and as you can see, there are lots of them. So our first three sections, which is connections, sounds and vibrations, and notifications, are all pretty self-explanatory and nothing really new here if you're familiar with smartphones. 
Feel free to check them out if you want to play with what apps will send you notifications or different ringtones, but we're going to start with the display section. This section has a ton of different options to choose from when it comes to getting the most out of your display, but mostly it's pretty good where it's at out of the box. Now there are a few things that I would recommend changing for personally what I think is a better phone experience. For starters, I would definitely turn off auto brightness. I would also decide whether or not you can actually notice a difference between FHD and QHD resolution. Out of the box, Samsung is trying to save us some battery life by setting the screen resolution to only 1080p even though the screen is capable of handling 1440p resolution. Personally, it's a bit hard to notice a difference, but I like to keep mine at 1440p anyways. Next is full screen apps. Since the aspect ratio of the S8 Plus is 18.5 by 9, and not the standard 16 by 9, most apps will not be stretched to fit the screen right away. By visiting the full screen apps portion of the settings menu, you can toggle which apps you want taking advantage of all of that display. Spoiler alert, it's going to be most, if not all of them. Under icon frames, you can toggle whether you want more of the standard icon look, or if you would like the frames that Samsung has seemingly put around every app icon, making them look all of the same size. I chose to go with the natural look and toggled this setting to icons only. Under status bar is where you will find the battery percentage settings, and if we head into the navigation bar, you can finally customize that ridiculous recent home and back button style to the back home and recent lineup that those who have had other devices that aren't Samsung are used to. You can also adjust the sensitivity of the home button and even change the background color of the entire navigation bar. The next section I'd like to touch on are the advanced feature settings. Here you will find a lot of the, well, more advanced settings of your device. Some of these are very useful and some of them are just a nice to have type deal. So some of the settings that I found useful are fingerprint sensor gestures, which allows you to swipe down on the notification shade using the fingerprint sensor, just like on the Pixel and Pixel XL. Unfortunately, I personally feel that the fingerprint sensor is in a bad spot, so I find myself not wanting to really reach for it more than I have to. Last year's S7 Edge allowed for the camera to be quickly launched from anywhere by double tapping the home button. Since there is no physical home button, this has been changed to the power button and can be toggled on and off if desired. Multi-window has been around Samsung devices for years, and now that Android 7.0 has multi-window baked in, you do get a few extra features than in previous versions. Instead of standard split-screen view, you do get an option for snap window, which will allow you to snap a certain portion of an app and dock it to the top of the screen, and then you can run another app below it at the same time. This might seem very similar to split-screen view, but more app capability and a little bit more fine-tuning over what parts of the apps that you're actually using. Lock screen and security is where you'll set up your fingerprint sensor, as well as all of your other security measures like pin, pattern, facial recognition, and iris scanner. Personally, I'm not a fan of the fingerprint sensor and its location, but the iris scanner is a decent replacement. Facial recognition is actually really good, although its security is not nearly as well secure as say the fingerprint sensor or an iris scanner, but it definitely works well enough for me. Always on display can also be fine tuned in this section, like being able to change the clock style. Now there are only a few available out of the box, but you can also download some custom clocks in the Samsung theme store. Swiping the clock on the lock screen will also give you various widgets like a music controller, today's schedule, or your next alarm. You can toggle these under the information and face widgets. Now the last couple of sections of the main settings menu are all related to your various accounts associated with the device, like your Samsung or Google accounts. Accessibility is where you can enable certain features for those who might be hard of hearing or have less than ideal eyesight and might need some assistance operating your phone. I'm going to leave these sections alone as most of you probably won't need them, but if you need to change your account or accessibility settings, you know where to find them. So that's it for this video on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus software. Now I left out the camera section on purpose because I think that could warrant its own video, but if you think I missed some other things that were super important and would like to share it with us, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.